I don't do pumpkins. I don't do any of the fall stuff that everybody else I see doing on YouTube when everybody's preparing their gardens for fall. I don't do that because my fall is pretty much a, an extended Indian summer. But I thought, you know, look at my colors here. Don't they just sort of give you that fall vibe if you were to think fall colors? <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having a quick mosey with me around my fall orchid blooms. And I've just picked out the colors that are fall related. There's one down there, Rainbow Forest is still doing the ninth spike blooming. It keeps extending. So pretty, so pretty. But you can see I can take off some buds here just to tidy it up. But there's still some gorgeous little blooms hanging out under my workbench, so to speak. So I can enjoy it as I plod away with the lecker. And then I just put all the other ones that sort of resemble fall up here in a little collection, at least to join in with all the fall prep I see going on. I thought, here we are. Let's have a look at what is in bloom this time of year that has sort of a fall vibe. And I think, um, yeah, some of these colors close up, boom, they definitely fit the bill. But let's just start. This is Brassavola fladgeralis. Maybe not exactly a fall color, but if you stick around, winter is coming. So she's here with us. Anyway, she deserves to be, having bloomed for the first time. And then here is my golden sunset, my tolumnia. Very, very fall, yes. Fits the bill perfectly. Cute. You. I love the fact it's like a little teddy bear. It has all those markings of a teddy bear. <laughs> like here, you can see this one. It's kind of kind of obvious. Too cute. And here is Golden Fire, just about to be done with this branching of the spike. I had another branching here, but that didn't make it. And there's something trying to come out through here. But I think we're done now. I think it's trying, but it won't make it. So these blooms, even though they're just about past their prime, if we're going to go with fall colors, they belong just a little bit into the mix. Very beautiful. And then, ye old faithful golden peacock. Oh my. When I see this, I don't really need a pumpkin. <laughs> oh my, golden peacock is on one, two, three, four, five spikes right now. So spike four and five have just opened. And here we have one bloom that looks like it's about to go over. But this is going to be in bloom for quite some time. We'll be able to enjoy it in the background on some videos. I love golden peacock simply because it is so peripherous. The blooms do last a long time. I keep her in shade for the time being. I do want the blooms to last long. And we're having quite the hot start to fall. And that's the result of this. That wouldn't normally happen. Just that it is quite hot sometimes. Then a week ago or something, I had 20% humidity. Today I've got 38. So yeah, I'm still doing some of the summer chores to keep the humidity up, even though we are heading into winter. And here is Gyrac Horn Dendrobium, sorry, this is Dendrobium Sutkinoi. Look at that. Look at that little funky, funky bloom. Complete, complete curly whirly. Just the cutest. So intricate. Absolutely amazing. I love it. 
just that the blooms don't present themselves really well, despite me not moving the spike. And when I move the spike to water or flush, I put the orchid back in the same position. So maybe that is just a result of it being a young plant. It's the second blooming. Last year's blooms didn't even get the curly whirlies of the petals going. So we've come to a point now where the blooms are presenting their shape. Now maybe next year I can get it to do a spike that actually presents itself beautifully like my gyrac horn here. This is Dendrobium gyrac horn. Some of the blooms are also starting to go, but it has been so long in bloom. I wanted to capture it together with all my other fall blooming orchids because it's gorgeous and it fits the bill as well. The maroon, the bronzing of the petals. This is absolutely, yeah, I like it. No fragrance, but hey, very, very exotic and very long lasting and very pleasant, pleasant, compact little dendrobium. And then here, is my Epicatlia gold post. What about this then? What about this? I am assuming 14 blooms and I am trying to get aphids off every day. I come to this orchid, she's in my blooming alley, can't miss her and I make sure to check every day all these little aphids but isn't this absolutely remarkable amazing amazing bright bright colors no fragrance although sometimes i would like to believe there is one and maybe that's just my eyes my brain tricking me when i see these colors to say yeah that's a fragrance but it's not i don't think it is but isn't that one beautiful little pom-pom of blooms right there incredible. So I'm going to put her back and let's see. I did say winter is coming. and Let's get something out that resembles a little bit of winter and let's not ignore the fact that it's just fall. Let's think ahead. Sorry, but I do try to be careful when I move my orchids and then let's see. Let's do the Game of Thrones thing. Winter is coming. Months later, and you wouldn't believe it, but Laurie Mortimer is still in bloom. Still super fragrant. Has a very sweet fragrant, but with a hint of a masculine in the back. I would say cedar, something like that. Not entirely sure, but it is extremely potent and very, very beautiful and clearly very, very long lasting. So this is not exactly the fall category because of the cool colors that it has. But for my little winter themed blooms, there we go. Cooler colors. Gorgeous, gorgeous Laurie Mortimer. First spike for me as well. Again, not a good presentation of the spike, but needless to say, I am glad that we've gotten to this point this season. Very, very pretty. And well worth having for being so long lasting. And then good old faithful, who can't include Dendrobium hibiki as a cold color. Every day now I do start to pick off the occasional bloom, old brack, and I still water her down every day because I'm seeing little white things starting to enjoy my blooms and I would like to appreciate them a lot longer than having something that I can't identify. Making them go down further. There's also a cakey here with roots that needs to be taken care of. So I, I spray it down with just plain RO water once a day in order to keep it looking a little bit fresh and blast the bugs off. Yeah, Dendrobium hibiki. Lovely, lovely. And I have to make some space because, but wait, there's more. 
a little bit more of a winter theme going on here with Balanopsis No ID. But given the name Ninja Yellow, look at this. Still waiting to open the last little bud there, but very much, very much ringing in the winter color with the snow white. On camera, snow white, and she is actually getting paler and paler and is beginning to resemble more and more the little freckles I am trying to save. And if my little freckles doesn't make it, I have a gorgeous, gorgeous hybrid from somebody that I feel really close to and am enjoying a marvelous friendship with, the Orchid Room. And imagine if this is, if I don't make it with little freckles, I have a combination of a little freckles, but from someone else, that means a lot to me. So she's still very, very light, light, very creamy yellow, but it is, it is not obvious. You can see a little bit of the splashes of green right there, but it's not obvious, but she is fragrant. Oh my, she's fragrant. It is a lemon scent, but there is more acid to that lemon, so it's very intense. It's not a subtle fragrance. Bonus, a fragrant little freckles, now called Ninja Yellow. So cute, I love this one. So yeah, what have we got still tucked away, resembling winter? Here is my CG Roebling Blue Indigo. It's been over a week now that these massive blooms are open and I've enjoyed every single day that I'm out and about amongst my orchids with this one. In your face, in your nose. Very, very strong rose fragrance. Roses, a bush of roses. I don't even say a bunch of roses. Love, love, love. Huge. Absolutely enormous. So I'm keeping her very, very protected in the shade of my blooming alley. That curtain is down early morning just so that the blooms don't get frazzled or stressed. And she is just holding up remarkably. Look at that with a golden peacock in the background. So for the glacier lovers, there is no turquoise, but this is definitely an invitation of winter. Oh my goodness. I do have another growth as well with another sheath. But I wonder if this is the one that will just bulk up the orchid more or if it tends to bloom again. I can't say because I don't know. I have only ever had her bloom once for me. Although I am a little bit surprised that she's blooming so early. And um, maybe that is why that next sheath is coming. So, this is my little display for fall and then into winter with what is available at Ninja Orchid's Blooming Alley. Seeing as they're all positioned differently in order to accommodate the blooms, appreciate the fragrance and protect the orchid from the sun, I decided just to bring them out on a table and show them to you instead of wandering around the blooming alley trying to make sense of where everything is and i'm going to come out back this way because the sun angle is going to distort the picture and say thank you ever ever so much sorry about the bucket in the background this is my work table that's my lecca back there <laughs> a place of mucho activity recently. My hands are shot to bits. But anyway, that's not the point. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a great transition into fall. 
also that your orchids are responding or managing and that you have if you're bringing them inside you don't bring any pests in and all that wonderful stuff that I wish every orchid grower who has to transition into a season and make adjustments for their orchids to take them safely through the winter. I wish you all the best and hope to see your blooms and your successes in this season when these big guys start to take over the bloom show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Thank you for watching. Bye.